these large enough? Yes, truly. I speak the necessary more, but rather pushing a more strict restraint upon the sisterhood, the votarists of St. Clair. Oh, peace be in this place. Who's that which calls? It is a man's voice. <gasps> Gentle Isabella, turn you the key and know his business of him. You may. I may not. <laughs> you are yet unsworn. When you have vowed, you must not speak with men. But in the presence of the priors. Then, if you speak, you must not show your face. Or, if you show your face, you must not speak. Hada, hada, hada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he calls again. I, I pray you answer him. Hail, oh. virgin, if you be. For those cheek roses proclaim you are no less. Can you so stead me as to guide me to the side of one Isabel, a novice of this place and a fair sister to her unhappy brother Claudio? Why her unhappy brother? Let me ask the rather, for an I must make you know that I am that Isabella and his sister. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> 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 Gentle and fair, your brother kindly greets you. Not to be weary with you, he's in prison. Well, me, for what? <laughs> that if I might be his judge, you should have his punishment and thanks. He hath got his friend with child. Sir, make me not your story. I would not. <laughs> Though it is my familiar sin with maids to seem the lapwing and to jest, tongue far from heart. <laughs> <laughs> Play with all virgins, so I hold you as a thing inskied and sainted by your announcement, an immortal spirit, to be spoken with insincerity as with a saint. You do blaspheme the good in mocking me. And do not believe it. Punis in truth, tis thus. Your brother and his lover have Embraced. <sighs> as those that feed grow full, and as time from the bare seedness brings the fallow to teeming poison, so too her plenteous womb expresseth his full tilt <laughs> and husbandry. Someone with child by him. My cousin Juliet? Is she your cousin? Undoubtedly, as schoolmates change their names through vain though apt affection. Ah, <laughs> she it is. Let him marry her. Well, this is the point. The Duke is very strangely gone from his, or many gentlemen, myself being one in hand and course of action. We do learn from those who know the very nerves of state that his givings out were of an infinite distance from his true meant design. Upon his place, and with full line of his authority governs Lord Angelo, a man whose blood is very snow broth, and who feels not the wanton stings and motions of the sense, but doth rebate and blunt his natural edge with profits of the mind study and fast. He, to give fear to use and liberty, which hath long run by the hideous laws mice by lions, hath picked out an act under whose heavy sense your brother's life hangs in forfeit, arrests him on it, and follows close the rigors of the statute to make him an example. All hope is lost. <laughs> Unless you, by your fair prayer, can soften Lord Angelo. And that is the pith of business between you and your poor brother. Doth he so seek his life? Has censured him already, and as I hear, the provost hath a warrant for his execution. Alas! Alas! What are poor, poor abilities and needs do him any good? I say the power you have. My power, alas, I doubt. Our doubts are traitors, and would make us lose the good we all might win by fearing to attempt. Go to Lord Angelo, and let him learn to know that when maidens sue, men give like gods. And when they weep and kneel, all their petitions are as freely theirs as they that would owe them. I'll see what I can do. But speedily. All about it straight, no longer staying but to give the mother notice of my affair. I humbly thank you. Soon at night I'll send him certain word of my success. Madam, I take my leave of you. Good sir, Duke. <clears throat>